you know, please tell us how should the company work better? You know, well, I, I think this should be changed and that. Thank you very much for your opinion. Thank you very much. And you know what? We have one big garbage container behind the building. That's where all the opinion goes. <laughs> and besides that, if it can please you, I will work double as much if one toilet more is installed in the company. Why not? Give them one toilet more and they will work more. Why not? The democracy is there. That was your opinion. It's fulfilled. We have one toilet more. <laughs> Let's work harder. They make good profit on you, stupid fool. That's how Vaishas, the real Vaishas, they do that. They are clever. So, uh, you know, this is not in Krishna consciousness like this because we don't work for money. That's why it's the first big difference. We work here for the pleasure of the spiritual master and Krishna. If this is not understood, then this is the wrong place. Any, I work for my own pleasure. Sorry, sooner or later it's going to be a problem. Because your own pleasure anyway. You don't even know what you want and you want it. I want, but I don't know what I want. No. Authority means in Krishna consciousness, and that's what Prabhupada did. It's amazing. He gave us what we wanted without us knowing what we wanted. And he showed by his personal example, this is how we become happy. And he gave us something. Prabhupada took it as a very, very important point. Are you happy? Is everybody happy? Look at the photos which were randomly taken from the early days of this movement. Do you see some measurable devotees there? And these devotees lived a very austere life, I tell you all of them. There was nobody in this movement who lived in luxury, really. That came a little bit later. Not in the early days. There was nothing to luxury, what? Just to establish a flat you can start to preach from. And just to go out and you go 12 hours a day on high and arm. What, do you, what, what is the physical spoken and enjoyable there? What do you benefit from it? You become rich by this or what? You chant Hare Krishna, you know, 12 hours a day on the street while people kick you, you know, and uh, curse you occasionally. Well, what do you enjoy with this? Everybody did that. Leaders, followers, didn't matter. But of course, then uh, the facilities increased. And we started to deal with the same problem which was there in Prabhupada's movement in Gaudiya Mat. As soon the first temples were established, and I tell you, Gaudiya movement started in a very austere way. Don't think just because you are in India you have an easy time. There is even incidents reported that the Brahmacharis had not enough to eat. Dr. Siddhanta Maharaj could know that when the lunch was served to him, the brahmacharis were actually fasting. So he immediately rejected the lunch. And he said, you sell it first to brahmacharis. So, you know, so such a, this was in the early days. But then more support came, more preaching success was there. First temples were built, and then it started. Oh, I have this big temple, and who's in charge? I'm in charge. You follow my command, that means because I'm in this position, I'm superior. I remember once, our previous GBC here, he wrote a manual for managers. I don't know what happened to that. I was part of the creation of that book. And uh, he was just starting to put down the, you know, the points what this book should contain. So I passed him my up for his room, it was open. And he yelled out with him, hey, come here, I'm starting writing this book. What is the qualification of a manager? You know, and I, I said to him, because you know, I was in that position, I said, well, I guess he's just a servant. Oh yeah, that's the point number one, and <laughs> he wrote it down. Because if you don't think you are the servant, and don't think that you have to be a popular servant, that's another, that's an interpretation. <laughs> it's a misconception. A servant means I have to serve everybody, ideas, needs, deviations, <laughs> you know, materialistic tendencies, that's servant. 
Prabhu, what do you want? Well, I, I think uh, when you go shopping, you know, I, I, I need a chewing gum. <sighs> okay, I bring you which flavor? Well, I like the strawberry. Okay, I bring you a big strawberry chewing gum. So you can sit in Brahmacharya Ashram and going, you know. Well, why should I do that? First of all, it's quite ridiculous. You chew like a horse or a cow. And second of all, why, why should I do that? It doesn't it make you really happy with that? It's not like we are satanic, you know. Oh, chewing gum, satan! Well, that is worse. <laughs> that is worse as chewing gum, for sure. You know, but it's just an example. But, you know, to cater to people's needs, can be done only, the real service is, we know that, in the terms of Krishna consciousness. But how do you do that? If Prabhupada, he was asked in the very early days, Prabhupada, you are introducing here some rules, some regulations. And Prabhupada was so bold. Can you imagine? He initiated people first and then he informed them about the principles they had to follow. That's normally not the procedure. We don't do that. So, you know, he later on laughed and he said, I tricked you. <laughs> and he was like going, that's so nice to be tricked by Prabhupada. Prabhupada ki jai! <laughs> because they were happy. Prabhupada had to trick them into happiness. But, you know, it was not, don't think that everybody took it. There were people leaving, of course. But many Prabhupada disciples left. Please, let's not follow the hollow, external, artificial idea of Prabhupada disciple. Prabhupada disciple is only a disciple when he follows Prabhupada. When he doesn't follow Prabhupada, he's only Prabhupada disciple. Finished. I call it always the Christian idea. He's a Christian. He loves Jesus. Really? Does he follow Jesus? Then he's a Christian. If he doesn't follow Jesus, he's not a Christian. He can go a thousand times a day to the church. He's not a Christian. Sorry. So to be a Prabhupada disciple, to be a devotee, means to follow. To the degree we follow, to the degree we are devotees. To the degree we accept the authority of Prabhupada, to the degree we are Prabhupada disciples. So somebody, just because he joined a few years later, well, we know from the Shastra, that nobody joins without having performed some sort of devotional service in the past. So what does it mean? But we know what he performed in the past as a service. We don't know. I definitely found a young devotees, young devotees joining after me, who I believe are very, very much more advanced as I am. Certainly. It's practical. You see what they are doing. You see how they are empowered. That's the measurement. Who is pleasing Prabhupada most? That's the idea. And that's actually the measurement of success and progress. Something is not pleasing to Prabhupada? Yeah, okay. It sounds, it sounds very great. It's, it's far out. It's very intellectual. It's very complex to study. Why if it's not pleasing to Prabhupada? So Prabhupada was pleased, and it is known even that Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, who was, as I said, a walking lexica, extremely intellectual person, he was pleased sometimes by one brahmachari going out and selling one magazine. He was immediately happy. Very nice. Prabhupada said, he heard it, he saw it. And that's where he actually drew his motivation to put so much focus on book production and book publication and Sankhita and book distribution. For one reason only, because he saw how it's pleasing to Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. And Prabhupada said, I wasn't even a writer. I was selling medicine. <laughs> Never wrote a book. But I started to write. And I saw my spiritual master likes it. As a matter of fact, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj said, whatever he writes for the Back to God magazine, publish it. That's why. A great honor from a person like Lord Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj who would certainly be very careful and very discriminate what's going to be published and what's not. 
So in this way, one can see, uh, one can progress. Constantly investigating what did Prabhupada really want us to do? And uh, what Prabhupada wants us to, first of all, to do is to be steady in ourselves. Steadiness is not easy to achieve. And steadiness is, is uh, because the senses and the agitation derived from this Kali Yuga society is intense. There's constantly some idea. We should do this, and we should do that, and we should do this, and then we should. So to be steady, that's a challenge. But on the other side, if you are steadily focusing on Shiva Prabhupada's pleasure, it should not be impossible. Like if you like somebody really, and you try to please him, you become very steady and you endeavor to please him, because you are personally focused. So this is what drove this movement to such a haze and such a result. Because there was this total focus on Prabhupada's pleasure. That's all. And it's called Ahituki Apratyata. Such a devotional service cannot be put by any material circumstance. So this strong faith into spiritual authority, as a matter of fact, the faith in any authority brings strength. Now, where that strength, what is useful, <laughs> what the result will be, well, you have material authorities and you have spiritual authorities, but the principle is the same. It's like you can see what the, our good neighbors here, Germans, achieve by following strongly the authority of Mr. Hitler. <coughs> I mean, they got, you know, they got the whole world in trouble. <laughs> it's a small, relatively a small, you know, group of people. But they were so determined, yes, I will die for Hitler. On the other side, there was thousands and thousands of Russians who were dying for Stalin. You know, they were calling, you know, Bartushka Stalin, our father, and they were running by thousands, being simply killed by thousands. They didn't mind. You know. And they finally became victorious. So you could say this is a mundane principle. What to speak of a spiritual principle? Why to speak when you address the internal energy of the Lord by showing Krishna, yes, I worship you by worshiping the pure devotee. Why well, the success can be achieved there? What a result can be achieved there? So we forget too often that actually we are here simply meant to be serving Srila Prabhupada, work for his pleasure, and uh, in this way make spiritual progress. And be aware of people who are, first of all, uh, presenting Prabhupada in a relative way. Yeah, 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 there are many sages, there are many Prabhupada's. Many. That's the first thing. Be aware of this. Prabhupada's position, without committing any offense to any devotee out there, is very unique. And it was practically demonstrated. Practical. It's not a question of belief. Just see what he has done. Nobody ever before has done that. But it's the nature of the conditioned soul not to understand where the blessings come from and just to use them. It happened even in Prabhupada's presence. Prabhupada gave the knowledge. His disciples coming out from total, total state of ignorance took it. They got empowered. And as they got empowered, Prabhupada became more and more for them expendable. And of course, it's a nice example to that, you know. Becoming empowered, that's a warning. That story is told all over again, 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 again. Uh, you know, as uh, one yogi, powerful yogi, was addressed by a uh, mouse. mouse. Please, please, can you help me? The mouse was pleading for help. There's this cat chasing me around all the time. And yogi said, what do you want? Well, make me to a cat. Then have no problem. Okay. Be a cat. 
and there was the cat. But after a while the cat came back and said, Ugh, I have still a problem, you know. There is this dog chasing me around. You know, can you make me to a dog? Yes, so be it. You know, and he was. The cat became a dog. After a while the dog comes back and says, there is still a problem. There is this tiger chasing me around all the time. Can you make me to a tiger? Yeah, why not? So be it. Big tiger emerged, sitting next to the yogi, looking at the yogi, licking his lips. The yogi said, what? I mean, now you are a tiger, and you are kind of thinking to eat me. And the tiger said, mm, very tasty yogi. And the yogi said, okay, again the mouse. And there he was. Little mouse again. How many times is all this happening? Many times. Too many times. You know. This is all coming when you are connected or disconnected from Prabhupada. Simple. People call it fanatical, people call it uh, personal cult, whatever they call it, it doesn't matter. It's a practical result. And Prabhupada never ever considers him considered himself to be the ultimate source, the cause of all causes. He instantly, immediately pointed to Krishna. So to think about Prabhupada, you will think about Krishna automatically, you must. Because listen what he is saying. He is speaking only about Krishna. And he asked you only to serve Krishna. That's all. Prabhupada never established even the worship of his own. He just said he must worship the Guru. He didn't say in which one. It was so bizarre that the hippies in the beginning asked him, where do we find the Guru? I mean, how more ignorant you can be. He's sitting in front of you, you know. Then one brilliant hippie got a brilliant idea, asked him, maybe you are the Guru. And Prabhupada said, few things, so. <laughs> he never established himself. Then the whole thing started. That's actually where I Krishna You know, not going to India and see this Guru and this Biri and this and that and this Guru and that Guru and that Yogi and this Yogi. And I'm not saying there's no beauty devotees in India, not at all. I have no right to say such a thing. They might, they might be very, very advanced personalities. But for us, here, Prabhupada was specifically empowered to preach in the West. And naturally, when you have such a personality coming up, you know, it's like sun going up, but there will be a shadow immediately. But then we have all kinds of imitators and this, and this comes behind. Yes, yes, yes. I knew Prabhupada. Well, well, well. <laughs> Behind a very big Prabhupada, there is a little Prabhupada. Oh, that's me, you know. Oh. This imitation business goes all the time. Whenever you see some great personality emerging, there's immediately independence behind. So we should always see the world with Shastra Chakshu means the eyes of the scriptures, which means in practical sense to see through the Sri Prabhupada's instruction. There are devotees who may maybe see. You, even when you see a flaw in a devotee, that flaw should become immediately tolerable when he is sincerely trying to please your Prabhupada. Not this humanistic blah blah blah, and we have to see the good in people. What is good? I don't know, but some good. It's all ignorance. There's a very practical form how to see good in others. By seeing them trying to search your Prabhupada. That's the good. Very practical test. Now I'm speaking, of course, about devotees. General public has no idea. But general public can be connected unconsciously to that service of Prabhupada. That's what we are trying to do all the time. By involving others serving Shri Prabhupada by serving his instruction. And in this way, we can be sure they make spiritual progress. Otherwise, we don't. So spiritual progress is manifested by you take anything what you want, the quality of a devotee, and see it in relationship for serving to Prabhupada, it's going to be easy. 
take, take the qualities of the devotees, we have Brahmanas here, they can all for sure make a detailed research into the quality of the devotees, and the answer will be basically the same. How do you develop a good qualities? You said Prabhupada. How do you become truthful? By repeating what Prabhupada said. What is that? Can you throw something in? Some quality? But that just to the bottom of that huh? you associate with the saintly person to attain his qualities. Yes. That's the main thing. You are you eager to have the qualities he has and therefore you associate with him. And this is actually what you see in a devotee. There's a good quality. Well, because he's connected to Prabhupada, the source of all these good qualities. Otherwise, what, what quality? What? <laughs> what did you brought for a good quality? <laughs> what did we brought? Let's face it seriously. What did I brought? I brought, I know, one quality I definitely have. I have an immense ability to speculate. I could just, that's a, good, that's a big quality. I could have a really good time with that one. I could imagine in a very, not philosophical, in a very essential artistic sense, I could imagine things. <sighs> we used to do it in an art academy, you know. Selling old shoes and giving a whole lecture to it. Nailing old shoes on a piece of wood, spraying them with silver color and selling them for 4,000 Deutschmarks as the masterpiece. The artist was having a revelation. These shoes, they symbolize the progress of mankind. And then a whole lecture to it, how the progress of mankind is even bigger to the fifth dimension. Actually, these shoes embody the fifth dimension. 4,000 Deutsche Marks, fifth dimension. We used to laugh about the idiots who were buying such a junk. I could explain you anything. Just be a little bit more in Maya, forget Prabhupada, and I can explain you that this cushion you are sitting on is actually a magnetic cushion, and by the rays of your energy you can start to float around. Actually, you are already floating, you just don't know it. That's how cheaters work. They just <laughs> speculate and speculate until everybody starts to work, believe it. <laughs> and this is where Prabhupada came into the picture. It's like these big speculation balloons, you know, blowing themselves up, everybody. Prabhupada came with a needle and was going <coughs> And what is left from a balloon, which is blown up, when the needle comes, just a piece of boomy, you know. This is the result. This is what you produce. There's some air recreation. So Prabhupada was down to the point, and he could expose anybody's speculation quickly, efficiently, and there were those who could take it, they were called devotees, and <laughs> those who couldn't take it, they ran. The don't think Prabhupada attracted everybody. Prabhupada also upset sometimes. <laughs> Quite a number of people. <laughs> By his firmness, he said, sorry, I will not change it. This is what Krishna is saying, and we are not going to adjust it for your pleasure. This was one of his qualities, uncompromising. So this is the only credit we have, that we come in closeness to Prabhupada and learn about his qualities and learn how he actually presented like, the scriptures in a way which, which uh, wasn't ever done before. There is even a Bhagavad Gita which is interpreted, this is symbolic. You know, Guru Kshetra is symbolizing this, Pandavas are symbolizing the that, the senses. And Arjuna is like the soul, and Krishna is like the supreme Brahma, blah, 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 something big. Actually, he is not, he's just embodiment of the ultimate. I, I don't even repeat what that garbage. As one of my gurus said, such a speculator in India has plenty of them. I will kick him wherever he is in India, physically, step by step towards Guru Kshetra and show him that way it happened. I will kick him personally, because you can see the place, what more you want. You can read the conversation, Bhagavad Gita, what more do you want? 
And above all, the proof is in the taste. The Prabhupada said, we don't ask you to believe. Just taste and do it. And then you will see for yourself. We are the living proof. How is it possible? Us being born in the last corners of the world, never heard anything about Krishna and Arjuna and nothing. And here we are trying to not only practice Krishna consciousness, but push it up on others. <laughs> this was never seen before. And that's only because of Prabhupada's example. So if somebody is interested to cultivate better qualities, well, then he has to investigate his Prabhupada's personality. Not separate. Nowadays, there are so many attempts, you know, separately, without referring directly to Prabhupada, to cultivate this and cultivate that, and, and learn this and learn that. And must always connect it to the source where it comes from. It's like this camera recording, it's connected to the electric plug, you know. If it's disconnected, maybe it can run for a little while on its own battery, maybe. And then at a certain point, it will be switched off, because there's no power supply. So the, the, it's very practical. We have to be connected. If you are not connected to Prabhupada, to this instruction, then we will be isolated, disconnected, and then we will be switched off. Simple. And we have examples what it means in the Shastra. You know that example when the demigods were ignoring, you know, uh, their spiritual master. How much they lost, even, uh, they had to even vacate the heavenly planet. While the demons, you know, they worship their Shukracharya, and they worship that, and they get so powerful, they could even defeat the demigods, which is normally never happening. Swarming examples. So, you can take it in a context with Maya. It's not actually impossible to overcome Maya. If you take Shri Aurobindo, you are connected. If you don't, then Maya appears to be very powerful, and she is. She can make you completely forget this whole thing that you are hearing now here. You are sitting here, you look like a devotee, and all that, tilaka. But we all have our covered form already prepared for us. <laughs> the rice race. Our karmic, you know, schedule is already there. It's written on the wall. You stop chanting Hare Krishna, you stop following Prabhupada, then you will become like this. Something very Danish, or something very Norwegian, or something very anything, genetical. You follow the genetic code. You can completely be erased. I mean, again, once again, back to the mystery of the of the cult or the belief of Prabhupada disciple. I would probably, if some of my compares, I wouldn't even recognize them. They're just sorry, but they are so covered, I wouldn't even know what it is. It happened to me in Germany two years ago. I heard from one not so practicing devotee who told me. You were so offensive to your god brother during the Janmasmi festival. He was standing next to you and you didn't even say hello. Because in Germany they don't even say on this level, you know, pay obeisances, they just say hello. And I said, well, how is, can this be? I remember my god brothers, especially those I joined this movement with. No, he was standing next to you, you didn't recognize him. He didn't recognize his presence. And I thought, yeah, maybe I didn't. And then I asked, how did he look like? 